Hello, Junta viewers. This is Avindian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 20 for our third series in the World Tour, where we'll be playing as the Montreal Expos. Um, a couple of things to note. First and foremost, note that we have a much larger market size than we had as the Milwaukee Brewers. And second, or sorry, the Seattle Pilots slash Milwaukee Brewers. And second, I'll be playing as manager and GM through this playthrough uh, for a couple of reasons. And I explained this at the end of the last video, but in case you didn't catch it. Um, first of all, it'll give us more interesting decisions to make, and it should also help us get to the World Series faster because we've seen the AI managers make some pretty questionable decisions. And it'll also stop me from forcing trading players because the manager gets a bug up is but about a specific player. So we're going to apply. And boom. So our new general manager wants us to make money, get a top 12 prospect, build a top five minor league system, and not to suck completely. Mission accomplished. Uh, we do. We are in an, an unenviable position. Uh, we're only going to get to pick fourth overall. But we're offset by the fact we have a larger market than a lot of the other teams do. So, you know, there's good and bad. Uh, we're instantly going to find ourselves uh, a new general assistant general manager... Um, and we're going to pick Je uh, Kyle McCarver. And then we have a couple of other jobs to fill. We need some managers. Uh, please give me coach tendencies. Uh, we'll install Chris Manuel in double A. Um, Cal here can be the manager of single A. And then the Honolulu Fusion. Let's pick Steve Welch. Done. Okay, so we're going to finish today, and we start with the expansion draft. Um, oh, hang on. Uh, I hate that it does this sometimes. Nobody let... I hate the star system as a way to measure players. Uh, here we go. Uh, we'll do 20 to 80 and 20 to 80. There we go. Done. Okay. So, we're looking for two things as we pick our expansion franchise. Uh, number one, we are looking for players that might be useful in the future. But number two, we're looking for players that we could turn as a profit. Uh, those are the two things we really want in the draft here. Uh, I don't think there's going to be much in the way of quality prospects, but if there were any, we'd want to try to grab those too. Uh, so let's auto-pick. It's pretty obvious Mickey Stanley won't fall to us, and that's fine. All right, so we've got a, a handful of decent choices here. All right. Let's start. Manny Moda has hits for a pretty decent average, but doesn't offer much else. Remember, we're playing a National League team this time around, so defense is extra important. Moda's probably not a good choice. Uh, John Roseboro is a top-notch catcher. With some, uh, with some decent defense, but he can't really hit the way he used to. 
I don't think he's a good choice either. Uh, Joe Askew hits for a bit of contact, a decent defensive catcher. Again, I'm not impressed so far. Don Kessinger. And I think this is going to be our choice. Kessinger's got a decent bit of contact, some good play discipline, uh, reasonably good at not striking out, a pretty fair shortstop. All things considered, we could do a lot worse than him. Uh, so we're going to take Don Kessinger. Hang on, wait a minute. Do I not have a scout? I don't have a scout. What? Interesting. It's not even letting me... Oh, you don't because scouting's turned off. Sorry, guys. I honestly think playing with scouting off is too easy. So we're going to turn that back on just as soon as I can remember how to do that. Hmm... Okay, so this won't let me update it because I have to... Here we go. Boop. And then I'd like you to keep all scouting reports because it's useful for me to look back at that. Okay. Now I should be able to hire a scout and we're going to want the best that money can buy. Because we can't go cheap here. Um... We're going to pick Joe Mort Martin just because he's a lot younger. All right. So we'll have to line OSA for this part of the draft, but that's fine. I think we're still going to take Kessinger. Even if my scout's uh, decision isn't the best, I think he's still the best choice. So we'll get us some Don Kessinger on the team. Oh, right. I get back-to-back -back picks. Um, now. Tommy McCraw is a light-hitting first baseman. Not a great start. Remember, we are going to get to draft before the season actually starts. So we should get at least one big building block to start off with. Um, Roger Maris is not the man he used to be. Which makes sense because obviously he wouldn't be in this list. Elrod Hendricks has some attraction. So many of the players that we're getting here are, quite honestly, bargain basement players from other teams. Uh, we do want pitchers. I don't know if Joe Horlon is the pitcher we'd want. Tim Cullen can't really hit. Um, Dick Green wouldn't be a bad choice, actually. He's a really good second baseman with a bit of power. I think Dick Green would be a fine addition to the team. Let's take him, too. Until next pick. So we've got our second baseman, we've got our shortstop. And now let's try to add some pitching. And I think we did this with, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, I think we did this with the uh, last playthrough as well. Camilo Pasquale is just the best star we're likely to get. So we'll go ahead and grab him. Done. And then... Uh... 
Yeah, Bobby Knoop is a good defensive second baseman, but can't really hit. Isn't there one like here? You know what? Let's sort this way. Position ratings. Um. Maris keeps coming up as a guy who's surprisingly competent, which is a bit confusing. There's also Lee May. And again, we have to consider this is his ceiling. We can't expect him to hit for this level of power again. But I think he's a good risk. I think we'll take Lee May. Next pick, please. Um, John Bateman's not a very good catcher. But has the potential to be a tremendous hitter. So we're going to take him. Even if we end up shifting him over to uh, first base at some point. I think it's worth it. And then... Okay, we got catcher, second, short, left. Center field. Uh, let's put in a filter. I want at least 50% center field defense. At least 50. Boop. Okay. And this is one of the problems. This is one of the things I was afraid of. Uh, there are no good center fielders. None of them are that great at hitting. I think Bochamp is probably the best of a number of bad choices. So, even though he's not that great a player, I don't want to be without a quality center fielder. So we're going to take good old Jim there. Alright, let's clear the filter. Back to all players. Rich Reese? Uh, maybe. He's got the potential to be a decent power hitter, and we could always shift him to first, so sure. All right, starting pitcher, please. Oh, right, I'm sorting by that. If we sort by pitching ratings, stuff. Stan Williams, perfect. I feel like we're kind of looting Cleveland. Uh, I think we've taken like three or four different Cleveland players, but remember, I'm not necessarily picking to be competitive right now, but I also know that there's no reason not to take advantages where we can find them. Um, Sparma. Uh, Sparma's a bit more risky because his control is bad. Which means we're always going to see high walk rates. Um, Alright, starting pitchers. If I take Sparma and Lawnberg, I'll have a reasonable rotation. So I think that's what we're going to do. There we go. So we've already got our rotation set, and now we need to find first, third, right field, and a bunch of other players. Let's go back to the players. And back to batting ratings. Now, one thing our team already lacks is power. I'd like to try to find us a real good power hitter. Uh, Kurt Motten. Actually, all he is is power and discipline, but he's super young. Hasn't had a lot of major league experience. Has never had a chance to start. 
These are the kinds of players we have to take risks on, so we'll take good old Kurt. And then... Darren Johnson, you will be my first baseman for the present. Okay. Auto draft. We need third base... Uh, we can shift someone else to right field, and we need some relievers. Uh, Rich Rollins can't really play third. Neither can Spezio. Uh, let's sort by contact. Bob Aspermonte can't play third, can't play third. I think we'll take Frank Quilici, Guido, as he apparently prefers to be known, as, again, a fairly decent third baseman with enough hitting tools that, you know, we won't completely suck. All right, so we got all the positions filled, basically. Now we're just going to take best player available. So whoever we think would be useful... Danny Lazar, that sounds good. Um, I do want a catcher you can actually catch. We'll take Joe Gibbs, or Jake Gibbs, rather. Sorry. Sorry, Jake. Um... Uh, Ramon Webster could grow into a pretty tasty player, so we'll snag him. Okay, made 16 picks. What else do we need? We need Dan again. And do we need a Bobby Lock? I don't believe we need a Bobby Lock. Or a Bill Haywood. Um. Are there any other interesting power hitters that we could stick on the bench? Uh, Chuck Hinton wouldn't be a bad choice. So let's pick up old Chuck. <clears throat> and I'll also take Ed Spezio. And then finally, we're just going to start grabbing some stuff fiends. Some pictures that just strike people out without even trying. Hi, Bill. Uh, Bill Short. And then do we have any other quality starting pictures? I think they're all gone now. Any closers? None really worth the name. So let's quickly switch to all players overall. People really don't like Jesus Alou. I'll draft him. Um... I want some really good defensive Here we go. Hal Lanier. Let's grab you as a utility guy. We'll also do the same thing with uh, with Dick Schofield here. Make sure we've got some quality bench players. 
Now, is there anyone left who's got crazy high potential but shit overall? Pete Camino, welcome to the Expos. Mike Hegan, welcome to the Expos. Uh, Phil Roof. Welcome to the Expos. Um, okay. I think at this point, I'm going to let the AI fill out the rest of the roster. Done. No thanks. Everyone designated for assignment goes right to the majors. I'm going to add all you guys to the 40 man for right now. Actually, I should wait until... Let's wait until after the draft. So we're going to go up to the draft pool announcement now. Oh, right. And I need to configure this, too. I want my entire organization. Because, to be frank with you, I don't really care what the rest of the league is up to. Really? It's got all the wrong names again. Well, it's got two of the award names wrong. It's because, uh, yeah, they're actually, they're all wrong. No, they're not. Yeah, MVP, Cy Young, Reliever, Rookie, and then we just need to change it to Silver Slugger and Golden Glove. And Golden Glove. All right, we are definitely going to make all teams here. There we go. This seems good. Okay. Oh, Clay Carroll. You are a treat. Got our scouting directors and we got our extra position players. Sweet. Wait a minute. Did I forget to hit enter and therefore... No, they're all correct. It just shows us wrong up there. And I got my assistant GM. No, give me my draft pool announcement, please, and thank you. All right. So. We are going to be choosing third. Now, you'll remember last time through, we were actually playing as the pilot, so we got the first overall pick, which we used on Carlton Fisk. So let's take a very quick look at the draft pool and see who we might want to target with number three overall. Again, we can be fairly certain we're going to be getting an elite player with elite potential. It'll just be a question of whom. Okay. So the top four players, if we believe the game, are Bernie Carbo, George Foster, Thurman Munson, and Dave Cash, with Carlton Fisk coming up as fourth. Um, alternatively, there's also Oscar Gamble and Gene Tennis. 
Now, George Foster offers a ridiculous amount of upside in the outfield. Uh, Bernie Carbo, quite frankly, appears to be the greatest player in baseball history. Was he really that great in real life? He did have an outstanding rookie season. And then he basically vanished. Um... There was Thurman Munson. I don't know, a lot of people said, Avi, you should have taken Thurman Munson last time. If he's available, I would take him. Um, and then we've got Dave Cash, who also appears to be another one of these guys that maybe had just a few outstanding seasons and then kind of fell off the face of the earth. But, uh... Yeah, the best pitcher is Dave A. Roberts. There's not a lot here in pitching that I would bend over backwards for. Um, Gene Tennis is also has a lot of potential, but he's a far more rougher product. Um, I would probably take, honestly, I would take whichever of these four is not, is available by the time I pick at number three. And then we would break down which of the two we would pick. Um, honestly, if all four were available, let's say I was picking first overall. I would pick Munson first. Because this level of offensive production from a catcher is just absurd. And then I would probably pick George Foster and let him develop. Because he also has just ridiculous levels of potential. Um, and in real life, Foster had quite a productive career as well, as you can see, hitting 348 home runs. Um, he was a big power hitter on the big red machine of the Cincinnati Reds in the 1970s. Um, so those would be my two. And if both of them are gone, I would take probably Cash um, or Carbo. Um, actually, Carbo looks like he's the better hitter. So, anyway, that's what I'm looking at. I'm just going to go ahead and end the winter meetings. We really need the team's help. Sure, we'll start a charity. Why not? And we'll go up to the Hall of Fame vote. Remember, we should be getting two to three solid um, draft uh, draft picks. Uh, Richie Ashburn. Yeah, I guess we could vote for him. Sure. Uh, there's not a lot here that's really leaping out at me, except, of course, for staying the man. And early win. Those will be the three people I'll vote for. Boop. Up to the first year draft. All right, so it's draft day. Oh, Vita Blue's in this draft. I wouldn't take him remotely with number four over or number three overall, though. I like Vita Blue quite a lot. I don't like him that much. All right. So, the pilots take Vita Blue. They just guaranteed me that I'm going to get Munson or Foster. Seriously. Stupid move, Seattle. Tom! AI. Halt, please. Halt. I did not anticipate having this much choice. George Foster is super tempting. 
But Thurman Munson. I'm gonna take Thurman. Done. Um Do I take Oscar Gamble? Knowing that I'm going to have to basically give him a ridiculous sum of money to get him to sign. He might fall to the third round. And a Ted Sizemore would be a pretty good choice. I could grab Bill Buckner, but again, there's no guarantee I'd sign him. Uh, Bill Russell... Bill Russell, an excellent shortstop who, if given some time to learn a bit, could be a tremendous hitter. Yeah, let's take Bill Russell. Why not take the shortstop? All right, guys, I'm going to take a gamble on Oscar. Okay, fourth round. Oh, God damn it. You did it again. I trust my scout, not OSA. Um, I do like me some real good relievers. Let's take Lloyd Allen. Yeah, I don't need Fred Kendall. Uh, Mike McQueen could be a really good reliever if given some time. So we're going to grab him. I could get hitting coach extraordinaire Charlie Manuel. It's not the worst idea, actually. Uh, we do need center field, actually. Let's take Herman Hill. And see if good old Herman can figure out how to play uh, center field. And there's only 13 players left, so we'll take Jim Williams. And done. Okay. Let's negotiate with everyone... But, a good old Oscar. Okay. Now we come back to Oscar. He wants more than 750 grand. Would he, would my owner stop me from offering him a million dollars? Probably. Yeah. So I'm not even going to make him an offer. We just accept the fact that he wants to go back to school and we lost a third round pick. It was worth it. It was definitely worth to see it. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Which reminds me, my scouting budget should not be zero dollars. It should very much be two hundred thousand dollars. Uh, I don't care about that. And please focus very heavily on amateur scouting. Than the minors. Than major league scouting. There you go. Okay. So we're not going to sign Oscar Gamble. And that's why it was a gamble. If you catch my meaning. And then I'm going to instantly go ahead and grab you guys and put you all on the 40 man for right now. Um, Charlie Manuel is 24. He's going to start in double A. 
Uh, Williams and Hill are both fun to start in single play. Let's go to the Rule 5 draft. Excellent. Uh, Mikey Boy, Rookie League is fine for you. I'm going to put you on the short list. Uh, Bill Russell, definitely going on the short list. He's 20. Again, he can start. Let's put him actually in single A. I think he could probably handle Louisville. Are there any good players in the Rule 5 draft? The answer is probably not, because that's generally the case, but you never know. Um, no. Nope. I, I bid you a good day. Rule 5 draft. Okay. Munson is going to start the year in double A. And Lloyd Allen is going to start in rookie ball. Good, they both got in. Remember last time it took like three years for early win to make it? I always thought that was weird. Oof, Pee Wee Reese. Couldn't even make 5%. Damn. Anywho. Um. So. Are we going to start with any of our super rookies? Um. In the majors. And the answer to that question is a resounding no. Because there's no benefit to doing so. Oh, wow. You really want Munson starting in the majors, don't you? Well, you're not going to get it. Russell could start in AAA. Damn, all right. We'll put everyone in AAA. See if I care. Um, because... If we're going to make a real shot at the World Series, we have to recognize we're back in that era of baseball where there is no free agency. We're a few years away from that. So we've got to draft and trade smartly. And we've probably got to let ourselves a bottom out. To be honest. Seriously, screen. I don't give a shit what anyone other than my scout thinks about my players. Just stop. I have to reduce before we do next time. Okay, now we're getting to that stupidness again. Which is goes, hey, you can't click on the right this one particular area of your screen because of reasons. Um Yeah, so even if everyone got hurt, I would not let any of these rookies start the season in the majors. I'm going to give them all a year to work in the minors and get to that top level. Um, because this team is not winning the World Series. Let's not fool ourselves. The team I have currently is if everything breaks perfectly right, a 500 team. If everything breaks perfectly right. Which it won't. Because baseball... So we need to focus this season on doing two things. Um, letting our young players develop so that the core of the next championship Expos team uh, is ready to go. Let them uh, get experience playing in the games. And secondly, the moment any player shows even a hint of promise, we flip them for more prospects. That is his first season. Um... I know it makes for kind of dull viewing, but hopefully you guys understand what I'm trying to achieve with this. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go right to spring training. And then we'll build the lineup and the rotation and we'll let things happen. Well, that's very kind of you. It doesn't matter because there's no one in free agency, but I appreciate the effort. 
I take it back. I could have missed out on Howie Beetle. Which I'm going to do anyway. I'll offer him a minor league deal. If he doesn't take it, who cares? I will actually take the extra money, though, and put it into player development. Please give me... Oh, I actually can't add that much more. That's a shame, but okay. Yeah, we don't have very much in the way of free agency. Or of, uh, of extra income. So that's fine. What are getting Howie Beetle anyway? Congratulations to us. And yeah, we're going to get uh, another third round pick next year. Which is a shame, but Oscar made his choice. And, uh, and maybe we'll get him in the future, who knows. Oh, damn, Orlando Cepeda retired. Sucks to be him. Um, I'm not even going to give him a shot in spring training. Nope. Oh, my God. OTP. Stop this. If the player has a scout, the scout should always be the first choice. Oh, damn, we think Munson's potential is cratered a bit. Why? Interesting. All right, let's go through the next month, and then after spring training is finished, I don't care that Danny Lazar is hurt, but thank you for telling me something that I don't care. Let's see that player development stuff. Oh, Mike Egan got better. That's kind of neat. Yeah, Munson just, just getting worse, which is strange. Manuel got a bit better. Williams got better. Lloyd Allen got a lot better and is putting heat on his fastball. That's a good sign. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Did I screw up? Did I, because I didn't set the rosters, is anyone actually playing? Of course they are. That's a stupid question. Sorry. Uh, simulate to the next week. Okay, personal message. Top 100 prospects. Munson is number four. And how does our minor league system look overall? Eighth. That's fair. I mean, don't forget, Cleveland had a bunch of players that we didn't. And I'm sorry. I like Tom Bradley. Tom Bradley should not be the number one prospect in, in my Major League Baseball. And you've already put him on the Major League roster, which is especially stupid. Okay, let's get the roster built. So, Danny Lazar, we're not sure when he's coming back. But let's check. Pitching, we've got 12 players. We need all of them. So let's set up the pitching staff. Okay, scouting, Joe Martin. Pitching ratings. 
All of our starters are kind of interchangeable, except Pasquale is the only one who can consistently throw strikes. Why are you not letting me make him a starter? Oh, because it says, right, there you go, four-man rotation. Pasquale is going to be the ace. Um, followed by Stan Williams. Followed by Sparma and then Lomberg as the last dude. Um, our best reliever is probably Lazar, who will set up as the stopper. And then I think we'll just make everyone else a middle reliever and let the AI sort out who should be pitching when. Remember, we don't necessarily need a huge bullpen because we should be expecting our starters to carry the load. Um, were any of you guys like outstanding against lefties but shit against everything else? Is there a big split? Uh, Camino cannot handle left-handed pitching, left-handed hitting. He's much better against righty, so I'm just going to make him a righty specialist. Uh, is anyone much better against lefties than they are against righties? Just, like, so much better. No. The splits here are all fairly benign, so we'll just leave it as is. Uh, who is... Do you have any left you can't get righties out at all? Landis. Let's make Bill Landis a anti-left-handed specialist. That's not a big part of the game at this point in Major League history. And what we really need at some point is to acquire a starter uh, that can sit at the back of the bullpen and fill in if one of our primary starters gets hurt. But if it happens, it happens. And I'm not going to lose much sleep over it. So we've got to whittle down the position players quite a lot. We got three catchers. I don't need three catchers. Uh, we send down Gibbs. We demote Stall. Bezio. Uh, Webster. Bochamp can handle himself at center, so I'd kind of like to keep him up. I need to go to six players, though. Uh, Quilici. I'm looking for people I don't have to pass through waivers. Because if I have to pass people through waivers, uh, I'm probably going to lose them. I guess Reese can go to the minors to start the season. Still got to get rid of four people, though. Uh, I, I'm happy with waving with demoting Gote. Three more. Would Hinton accept a demotion? He would not. I don't know if someone said in the past I should disable that feature, but frankly, I don't mind having it on. Um... I'm going to actually try to flip Hegan for a prospect of any kind. These are some pretty bad players. We're probably getting hosed, but I need to clear the roster spot. Because I don't think you'd give me another prospect, would you? 
How many catchers does one bloody team need? Damn. I know this is probably wasting my time, but let's see. Ah, I can't afford them. Okay. Trade. All right. Back to the home screen. Still got to get rid of two position players, though. And I still have way too many middle infielders. Lanier. And Rojas. All right, here we go. 25 men. Let's get the position set. Okay. So remember, you always want to start with the lineup first. Because that's where you're going to get your, your bang for your buck. Okay, so we're going to start with who is the best contact hitter on the team. It's Jesus Salu. But who offers very little other secondary stats. Moving down. It's probably Kessinger as our number three guy. Because the most important thing for the number three guy is to be able to consistently get on base. Actually, the most important thing is to have a mix of power and contact. So I think Lee May is going to be our, our, right, our starting dude. But does he have a dramatic split by chance? Uh, he definitely struggles against left-handed pitching. So we might want to find a different number three hitter against lefties. Um, okay. I'm going to bat Jesus Salu second. For the simple reason that I think he'll be best positioned to move people up if he's batting second. Uh, the best eye contact combination belongs to Kessinger. So he's going to be leading off. And then Johnson bats fourth. And Martin bats fifth. Sorry, fifth. Now we run into our first issue. Uh, no, we don't. Yes, we do. We do. The Martin problem. <laughs> no, we don't. Martin's going to be playing against. Uh, <laughs> Mon's gonna take May spot against uh, against left-handed pitching, and Mon's gonna be my number one pinch hitter and my number one backup left fielder. Uh, and he will be the defensive replacement on left field. Okay. Chuck Hinton is first in left field. This is problematic. Um, huh. Hinton, I guess, is going to be a utility player. And he's going to be the number two pinch hitter. This is not a great start, by the way. We have a lot of good hitters that we can't play because we don't have position spots for them, which is fun. Um, Bateman is going to bat fifth with Rufus' his backup. Uh, our second baseman, Green, is going to be batting sixth. I said sixth. Uh, 
Uh, I guess our old buddy Dick Schofield's going to be playing third. Unless Davenport can handle third. So, yeah, Dick Schofield plays third. Um, Murphy can play center but can't hit. Bochamp can't really do either, so I guess we play Murphy. Right. Davenport plays second, sh short, and third, so he is my primary middle infield backup. Bochamp plays here. Uh, we want Martin Hinton, Roof, and Bochamp, I guess to be our pinch hitters. And do we have anyone that's really fast? Martin is kind of fast. We don't have much in the way of pinch runners. This is life with an expansion team. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy the depth chart and the lineup. And then we will make changes as we need to. There we go. Okay, I was just to say that one is a custom lineup. I didn't think of that. Um, remember, May has a giant hole in his swing against lefties. He kind of gets eaten alive by them. Yeah, check that out. So we're going to bench May in favor of Martin. And... Actually, Martin sucks against lefties, too. Oh, no, he doesn't. He just, in general, isn't a great hitter. Okay. And then I kind of want to let Hinton play over Johnson. But look, let's just start it so that Hinton gets a start once a week. I think that's fine. They'd still get a decent number of starts, at least to begin with. Pitching is set. Lineup is set. Let's get started with our very first season of the Montreal Expos. Okay. Lonberg shut us out. Rick Wise shut us out. <laughs> Kuzman shut us out. Charlie Manuel got a pretty good start to his career. That's nice. Um. So, first impressions, this team sucks. Yeah. Um, no one's had enough playing time for me to decide if there's anyone here that we could trade and make a profit on. Darren Johnson is the leading candidate so far. Yeah. That is a thing, right. We're not sucking enough, you guys. Thank you. We need to be top five bad in order to guarantee a quality player in the draft. Okay. We sure do get shut out a lot, but hey. Rich Reese is having a great year in the minors. Guys, with my lineup, everyone mystifies me. We're constantly like, what's a baseball? And things of that nature. Um, Lloyd Allen got better. Munson got better. Gibbs got better. Stahl got better. Cookie Rojas got better. That's what I like to see.
All right. Immediate impressions. We have a bad team. Okay. Obviously. What could we trade and get something of value? I think the answer is Darren Johnson. So what do we got? Okay. So we've got an offer of Don Young. A reasonably good center fielder who has some level of offensive talent. Already a pretty nice prize. Let's start from the bottom, work our way up. Les Roar. Uh, he's fundamentally flawed. He's never going to have great control or strike many people out. So pass on him. Frank Reberger, same problem looks like. Rick Caster. Here's a legitimately good relief pitcher. So, okay, maybe Caster. Trepidino. No. Alvarado. Possibly. Eddie Leon. No. And what about Manny Sanguian? If I didn't have Thurman Munson in my system, I probably would trade for Sanguian. But I think we're going to try to grab... Oh, I didn't even look at Tom Hutton. Uh, no. Steve Hahn Snope. Give me that Don Young. I think he's our best bet. A reasonably good center fielder who is probably going to hit well enough to justify his place in the lineup. I could ask if they'll give me more like Bobby Valentine, but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't. Would you give me Steve Garvey? I'm sure you wouldn't because he's not tradable. a trade for Ray Fossey. But I doubt you'd give him to me. And I don't know that I'd want him even if you did. So, yes, we will take this deal. And I'm going to send you to AAA. Fine. 40 man, then AAA. Okay. Next man up. Reese, I think. So, Hinton's going to be playing first base now. But I'd also like to get Reese involved more. How does Reese look when it comes to platoon split? He likes facing right-handed pitching. Like every other damn hitter on this team. I'm going to bench Lee May, actually, and I'm going to let you play in his place. And we'll just stick May there, I guess. It's like the third left fielder. Let's actually, we can trade May. Let's see what kind of people we could get for him. Okay, I will take Mike Paul. In exchange for Lee May. That's a really good trade. For actually quite a nice relief pitcher. But Rick Kester could be even better. Let's take Kester actually. I don't think Rick Kester is a starter. And I'll just call up Webster to just kind of stand around and be a backup outfielder. 
Uh, go ahead and actually fill out my depth chart based on the lineup. Yeah, this is fine. I'm not going to interfere too much with my bench coach's plans here. Oh, sorry. Hinton's got to be the starter. Okay. So we've already made a couple of good trades and picked up a pretty a couple of pretty interesting pieces. Uh, that is what this first year is for. The team doesn't necessarily have to get better. The team just has to um, make sure that we acquire assets as we can. I wonder who our de facto all star is going to be. That Bob Gibson guy, he's pretty good. Everyone gets a shutout against us. Charlie Manuel's actually really impressing. Um, we're going to give him some more time in double-A, but he could very well hit triple-A next year. Purge our messages. Purge the Xenos. Um... Do we flip Don Kessinger? Now, Bill Russell is already quite a shortstop and is already better than Kessinger. What kind of market is there for a Don Kessinger? Um... Steve has an intriguing bat, but I don't like his salary, and I don't think we can afford to take it on. It's pretty much the same guys I saw before. Oh, Solida. I'm done. He's got so much potential. He's nowhere near that potential, but if we give him some time to get there... He could be a very nice addition to this team. So lie to me, please and thank you. Could I get Carl Morton? Probably not. Also, he just got picked, so yeah. Alright. Now, I'm not actually going to call up Russell. I want him to have a chance to have a full year in the minors. This is just about acquiring assets. That's all we're trying to do right now. And then I'm just going to... Uh, who's actually the better shortstop? Green only plays second. Kulichi doesn't play third. Schofield, you're the new shortstop. Congratulations. Uh, you're going to bat there. And sure, why not have Quilici be the leadoff hitter and play third? Schofield at short. Quilici at third. Done. Okay. Go up to the all-star break. Uh, that's fun. I don't really have another starting pitcher. At all. So...
you know what? It's going to be fine. What's the worst that can happen if we only have three starters? Any pitcher with absolutely any, and I do mean any, level of stamina. Someone who could throw maybe as many as two innings, given the opportunity. I guess we give Kester a shot to be a starter. It's going to go horribly wrong, but... Horribly wrong is kind of the motto of the Montreal Expos this year. Rick Kester is like, why... A trade proposal. Um, yes, this is completely reasonable. Done. The completely part. Okay. We are going to be installing a new coaching staff next season. How is Vec Victor? Okay, Victor's actually really good. Victor, you may come back as my bench coach. I think this is going to be the year we start to rebuild the minor league coaching staff. But yeah, we could definitely do better at hitting as a hitting coach. Pitching coach. Meh. Alright. A trading proposal, you say. Dalton Jones for Quilici and Caster. I'm not giving up Caster. Let's alter the deal. What if I drop Caster? You won't take it. Then I'm afraid I'm going to have to tell you no. I do. Oh, I don't know he had to be on the 40 man. Huh. Okay. I'm going to put you in triple A, my friend. Oh, that's your issue. Hey, Pete, go back to the miners. It's Rob's time now. Yeah, Kester's going to hate me. If he doesn't already, he's like, why? Why are you making me do this? You are sucking for a good cause, my friend. Sucking for a good cause. Um, ooh. You're trying to dump salary. No, but. I do think trading a Jim Longberg is not the worst idea. Again, focusing purely on prospects, what am I getting here? It looks like it's basically the same pool that I've been offered before. With the addition of Bob Robertson's potentially legendary power... And a bunch of catchers. The thing is, I need pitchers to just stand around uh, and pitch. So I have to hang on to Lonberg this season. Unless someone offers me a starter in return.
another trade proposal. I can't. Who is my one all-star? I demand to know. Stan Williams. Stan is having a pretty solid season. What if I offered Stan Williams? I'm going to actually add regulars. I'm not going to ask for veterans, but I'm going to add regulars to see what kind of offers are being made to me. Well, it's certainly a much bigger list. I'm not sure what trading for Clyde Williams would accomplish. See, if I trade a starter to get a starter, I've in fact made no significant improvements. So, to get Joe Morgan. Yeah, I don't really think it's worth trading for such a limited return. Because I just need warm bodies to throw pitches. No. Please, no. Nope. Um, yes. Fine, join the 40 man. I can go to triple A. Anyone else I want to trade at the deadline? <sighs> Not really. Because the problem is I'm never going to get the value that I think I should. Here, you know what? Let's go all in. Let's offer Williams. And. Lonberg. And let's see what kind of offers we get. I could get Ken Harrelson, who would admittedly be a very nice upgrade if there was any value in keeping him whatsoever. There's Wilbur Wood. Louis Tiant. Well, that is an interesting idea. First of all, who's the best peer player that they're going to offer? I think I saw, I've seen a couple of 60s. Cleon Jones, John Purden, uh, Nate Colbert, Pete Rose Sr., 
Tony Perez. Tony Perez. Now that's interesting. Perez is expensive, but he's also a very good player. And far better than we're likely to find in the draft in the immediate future. Or shit, Lee May. This is turning two starters into a center of the rota a center of the lineup hitter. That is not something to be turned down lightly. I'm going to give that a very hard think as I look through the rest of the roster. Uh, Jim Merritt, an excellent pitcher. He lacks a bit of power for my taste. I could bring in Denny McLean. Basically trading two older starting pitchers for one younger, really good one. I don't want Ken Harrelson. I don't want to take on that much salary. So, the way I see it, there are three real potential trades here. The first is for Louis Tion. The second is for Denny McLean. And the third is for Tony Perez or Lee May. Tony Perez is a middle-of-the-order hitter that could be the centerpiece of the next great Expos team. Same for May, but to a lesser extent. Because uh, Perez can occasionally take a walk and he also hits for a high average. If I thought we were, if I think we're going to compete in the next two to three years, Perez is the right move. Otherwise, the right move is, mo is almost certainly grabbing uh, Denny McLean from the Tigers. Because he's a potential ace. And those are also hard to find. But could get one of those. The Reds are also offering Milt Pappas. Alright. Tony Perez and Milt Pappas. Do you accept this deal? Not very good. Okay, but we're in a position where this deal might make sense. I'd rather get a young pitcher, though. What about Gary Nolan? And see what else I could add. Okay, that doesn't work. What about Jerry Arigo? No, you don't like that deal either. I could probably get Pappas, but that's probably it. Let's add Solida. Because Perez is better right now, right? Could I get you to add George? No, George Culver's not really a starter. Would you give me Arago? What if I gave you Dick Green? Because I know you guys are, are pretty pro Dick Green. Or even like Quilici. Okay. This deal just went insane. Can I drop Quilici? No. I can give you Bateman who sucks. 
Can I get Nolan? What if I drop Bateman? Is there anything I could give you here? No? Okay. That's fine. Yeah, all right. This is an interesting trade. And what do we add in here? I think we add Alu. So here's what this deal gets us. An amazing, outstanding hitter in Tony Perez to pair with Thurman Munson and Bill Russell to form the core of an, a fantastic Montreal offense. Uh, it does get rid of our three best starters in exchange for two mediocre starters. But that's fine. We're not going to win this year anyway. Do it. This is a blockbuster trade to all end all blockbuster trades. And this is very seriously going to make me think very carefully about my next season. Um, I need another starting pitcher. Camino, fine. Um, here, bench coach. Build us a new staff and a new bullpen. And while you're at it, give me all the lineups and all the depth charts. Done. Okay. I'll be damned if Tony Perez wasn't far greater than I thought I would get for those players. Okay. What's our next step? I think our next step is just to finish out the season. Because I don't think there's anyone else here that I could trade and get a real profit from. Unless I turn around and spun Pappas to a contender. I mean, he's a good cheap starter. And he's maybe a little bit out of his prime. But maybe this isn't the best season to trade him. All right, let us keep on keeping on. Player development. How are my rookies doing? Uh, Russell's getting better, Munson's getting better. So let's talk about what we could have next season. Just based on what we've gotten so far. And holy shit, Rick Kester is actually turning into a starter. This is an unforeseen development that actually makes this an even better deal. Um, I'm not going to leave him as a starter for long, though. Uh, he's only got two pitches. Which makes him very problematic as a starter. But. So, right. We've got a potential. Bill Russell, Thurman Munson, and Tony Perez as a 3 4 5. Uh, Russell might actually be more of a leadoff type hitter. So maybe he ends up being the leadoff hitter. That's insane. Like, as a core, that's great. And we'll be able to add another player on top of it through the draft. Now, we are nowhere near competing for um, for championships. And we probably never will be. Which is completely fine. Uh, I, don't, I don't object to that idea that we're still a ways away. Because we're going to have to build a whole rotation. And that's going to be very challenging. Um, but... We've just made our window, I think, both broader 
And, uh, yeah, whatever, Joe. Oh, hey, he's back. Welcome back, Joe. Um... Let's send down nobody. Let's actually let Sparma go ahead and uh, rehab. And then when roster expansion comes, I'll put Sparma back in the, the staff. Okay, right now we're going to get a top three pick. Oh, damn. Nice. Uh, bring Sparma back. And then uh, pitching, go ahead and rebuild the staff and the bullpen. Go to the end of the regular season. Yep, don't care. Damn it, Seattle. You suck at sucking. Ah, oh, well. We're looking at the top. We're looking at the number three pick again, which is pretty good. Uh, that's, that's real good. And I'm completely comfortable with picking third. And we'll just go to the end of the playoffs. I wonder who wins the World Series in 1969. It's the Oakland A's. Congratulations, Oakland. Is Mike Rule saying his wife has... Hmm. I don't know. All right. So we've got a lot of stuff that we're going to do next episode. But here's the upshot. We have a chance to make a significant stride next season. Um... I increased profit. I got his prospect. I've got a great farm system. He is delighted. Uh, Al Worthington retired. And we're going to have to replace a bunch of coaches and such. That'll be our, pro our, our thing for next season. But. We have. Quite. A, an offensive core. Whereas with the Brewers who built through the pitching staff, we've lucked into a potentially elite offensive core, even without adding more talent in the draft this season. And we're probably going to be... Let me check the standings real quick. Uh, we're going to get the third overall pick. And if we use that pick judiciously, we could either make a potentially brilliant offense next season, or start to add pitching talent, which we also quite desperately need. Um, but we will cover that subject next season. I am not at all upset about this season. I think it went perfectly. We got what we needed to. We've, we shifted a bunch of crap to make a genuinely promising core that's only going to get better in the next season or two. Until next time, this has been Avindian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.